more than just a game. There's no talking on the green. No, I don't see any two prices. Nothing is soft. The speed of oil is wild. Welcome to the Bad Bias. Ah, good morning. Lovely to have your company right across Australia on a Sunday morning here on With Our Bias. It is a big, big show that we've got coming your way as the countdown to the Australian Premier League just continues to get closer and closer. We're ticking the days off the calendar. Before we know it, we'll be back there at Pine Rivers for APL number two. It's going to be a massive, massive week of bowls. A couple of massive guests in the studio to join us in just a few moments' time. Brett Wilkie, Mark Casey sitting here ready to go. Showing us some pretty funny fi- pictures as well that we might need to address before the end of the show this morning. But my co-host, as always, on a Sunday morning is Barry Lester. Baz, a very good morning to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Yeah, we're in uh, good company this morning, so I'm looking forward to the show. What are they showing us on the phone, Baz? What oh, just some way? old photos of us out in the bowling green having some good times over the years, mate. Back in the days. Yeah. Back in the days. Now, you've got something that you need to talk about for our Melbourne listeners, something that's going on at local level. Yeah, one of my clubs as a re- regional bowls manager is Black Rock uh, Bowling Club. And, uh, yeah, they're having an open day today so if you're in the area pop down bit of fun some to eat play a game of bowls and just get out there and enjoy it starting to see a bit of this aren't we this is the time of year where we start to stress to people about their christmas parties if you've got a christmas party or if you've been charged with the responsibility of organizing the christmas party at your office and you've got no idea what to do well we've got the solution for you right here bass yeah someone's uh, facebook status the other day uh, came up and you know, i just said straight away bang you know contact your local bowling club because they were looking for ideas so um, we, we know that we've got out there and enjoyed the sport before and we're in great company like I said before and these guys love the sport so people out there get out there and give uh, barefoot bowls a go and what better opportunity than your Christmas party well the gentleman that Baz just referred to as these guys are two of the more illustrious names in the sport of bowls Brett Wilkie and Mark Casey have joined us in the studio this morning boys to uh, specially co-host the show good morning to you both Morning, Jack. G'day, Jack. Now, there's uh, been a big conference that you've been in here for earlier in the week. It involved all of the CDOs. It involved region managers. I- everyone was involved, basically. Tell us a bit about the actual conference it- itself first, Brett. Uh, well, our NTC coaches from all over the country got together and uh, touched on different sort of things that have been happening over the year and uh, what what we've done, what we can do better. And we've also got around to different sports and and just touched on what they do, what works for them, and tried to compare different things that can cross over with different sports. So great to, to see how other sports and what they do and, and what works. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that the crossover with different sports because Mel Jones has, uh, has started to become very involved in the sport of bowls. We've had her on the show, Baz, and probably feels like we're pumping her tyres up on a weekly yeah. basis here at the moment, but she has made an impact, no doubt. She's impressive to listen to. Case, how did you find her? Yeah, she actually attended one of our dinners the other night and spoke to the group. And uh, obviously, sh- her background uh, with cricket is going to be, uh, you know, a big advantage for our sport leading forward. So, um, yeah, she was a lovely lady, and uh, it was really great to meet her. And it's great for our sport that she's she's on our side now. Now, what's on the cards here? What's coming up for our listeners who want to know what the outcomes of this conference were and what the next 12, 18, 24 months looks like? Baz, just step us through some of the, the key areas of the conference. <laughs> There's no bigger uh, words in lawn bowls right now than these two words, Jack attack mate yep. that's what it's all about coming out of the conference re- regional bowls managers we've got a good rundown on what it's all about how it works how we're going to implement it how we're going to roll it out so um, events wise we've got obviously Australian Premier League etc but as a national perspective we've got a fantastic initiative for clubs and for the sport and it's it's all about jack attack but we had some really good guest speakers come along we learned a lot of things we upskilled in areas and uh, it was a great conference really good opportunity for us all to get together but we did have one small sad note i must mention it um one of our uh, esteemed colleagues is is finishing up and um yeah it's a little bit sad to see him him leave us but uh so we're four and a half minutes into the episode and you deliver the bombshell now Do yeah you, have you got something that you can we go with this yeah. on live radio? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Um, yeah. So um, Richard Law uh, from South Australia, he's, uh, he's he's no longer going to be a regional bowls manager. Finishing up next month, and um, we gave him a good send off. And uh, he's one of the originals, so yep. sad to see him go. But um, no, it was a fantastic week, and and uh, it was good to get, like I said, upskilled in a lot of uh, great initiatives. And well done to Richard too, as you said, one of the originals. Baz has yep. been uh, pushing the message for a very long time. Jack attack is the key word here, boys. It's certainly that Baz has mentioned to come out of the conference. From a local level, you're both very heavily involved and bowls is essentially your life. Case, you first. What sort of scope has Jack Attack got 
to really drag in the, the next brood of, of young bowlers and, and even bowlers who might get to mid-30s and decide that playing cricket or footy or tennis is too hard on the body. What sort of scope of growth have we got here? Yeah, it's going to be huge. As, as Baz just mentioned, uh, for our sport, it's going to be designed, uh, the program is designed to attract the non-bowler. So um, it's going to be a short, fast uh, and fun game. You know, we're only probably playing out in the green for about an hour. So yeah. um, all the other sports have got some sort of uh, stepping stone in place to their main competition and, and this now is going to be ours. So as you can tell by all of this, we're really excited by it. And, uh, you know, we're... Even the clubs, the clubs that know about it, um, you know, they're really looking forward to it. So it's going to be fantastic for our sport and uh, something that's going to definitely grow our membership, which would be great. Brett, can you see it taking off pretty quickly? Yeah, I can see it taking off. We we all had a bit of a game with it last night at one of the local clubs and everyone enjoyed it. Went really well. Worked the time frame of it was short and sharp. Everyone enjoyed it, so I think it'll really take off. Now let's talk a little bit about the Australian Premier League. As we said, it's coming around very quickly. It's it's only. Uh, getting the calendar out and doing a bit of planning myself this week, that I do realise that it is ticking over very, very quickly. Back at Pine Rivers for APL02. I want to go back 12 months, though, to where it all began. And, and the very first, we we all sat there and we all really didn't know what was going to happen. It was a bit like seeing documentaries on the old World Series cricket. Anyway, no one knew what was going to happen. We were live the first night and it went really well and we all had a beer and were just amazed that nothing went wrong in the first night. But... What was the overall impressions? And I, I guess, question to you both, what has been the, the talk since APL01 in terms of how the public perceived it and also how the bowls community perceived it as well? Uh, we've had a lot of really good feedback since since the tournament everywhere I've been around at different clubs. Uh, it's all been positive. Everyone loved it. And I uh, can't wait to get some more back on TV to watch it again. How did you enjoy it? Yeah, I know all, all the players I spoke to all really enjoyed it. It was very short and sharp, which <laughs> was, we weren't accustomed to, but um, we soon got into the, the swing of it. Uh, we had to. It was uh, So we had a, a couple of games off TV in the afternoon before we got onto the TV games, and and it was uh, really enjoyable for all the players. Baz and I have spoken about this before. Because of the format, as you said, Brett, that it is pretty quick and it jumps from, from match to match pretty quickly, do you think in the first couple of days that that caught a few out, and I'm, I'm referencing probably the Sydney team as much as anyone else, that they seem to be really caught out by the fact that it's over before it really starts? Yeah, there was a lot of tactical changes in the first couple of days, and I know uh, Sydney struggled with the one-end tie-break in a lot of games. They just couldn't quite get over the line. Um, I know Brisbane had a lot of success winning um, tie-break in. I mean, not tie-break, power play. Yeah. Ends uh, got them over the line a lot of games, and then there was different tactical movements with the interchange. Uh, different teams tried different tactics from the start, and then uh, I don't think uh, any of them really stayed with their initial tactic. They ended up with new tactics by the end of the hmm. tournament. Very funny to watch, where the first day everyone was sort of jovial and talking to each other. Then everyone worked out how tactical it was. All of a sudden, the teams weren't talking to each other. No yeah. one wanted to barb each other. But in the first day, Baz, it was, how are you going to use the power play? What do you think? By day three, it was, bugger off. This is what we're doing with it. You're not having our tactics. Well, that's what it's all about, I suppose, being such a new format. And it, it's been a new format for abs absolutely everyone. So um, every player really had to adjust. But, yeah, it's exciting to, to see this year how yeah. they're actually going to um, implement a game plan before the tournament starts and then come out and obviously try and achieve that. Well, they've had 12 months to think about it. And Brett just brought up a very, very good point that Brisbane basically won the tournament on mm. the back of the strength of the power play in the final. South Australia or the Adelaide Endurance were, were very very good through the whole tournament. If it was judged on consistency and also in that final they probably would have won but two massive power plays basically back to back got the job done for you boys case. How was it to win in your home state? The The atmosphere in the final was was just really really loud. It was stadium like the way that it, the, the noise was echoing around Pine Rivers, but how was it for you guys to, to win in front of the home state? Yeah, as you said, it was outstanding, um, but not only the finals night, all, all the nights on TV were, were great, so um, you know, I'm pretty sure it came across really good for for television. But uh, you know, to win in front of Pine Rivers as home home crowd was you know it was sensational. It was great for their club members. So um, and and as the boys are saying, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be tough to go back to back. Um, two new teams coming in. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, we're really looking forward to it. We will talk about the makeups of the team very shortly. And the fact that Brett he's representing the new franchise, the Gold Coast Hawks, who will be in for APL 02. Baz, before we get to the break, we, we've spoken about the APL at length and mm. it's been a, a topic of conversation and sh so it should be. But for those who didn't get a chance to watch it in APL 01, just tell the listeners and put your little sales hat on <laughs> here as well if you need to. But 
Give the listeners a bit of a pitch. What can they expect? Why is it so different to every other bowls tournament they've ever seen on TV? Well, obviously the concept isn't out at Clubland, so uh, it's, it soon will be once we uh, get Jack Attack out there. But it's, uh, I suppose it's very informative, so they're, they're learning something new. They're seeing players that may not have seen before. Um, I know there's uh, some players like Tom Mitchell coming through the ranks that isn't a household name yet. But So they're going to see uh, high-quality bowls. Yep. They're going to um, learn a new format, which they can implement through the Jack Attack program at the club. And they're going to see some new players, which uh, they may not have seen before. So very exciting, high-quality bowls. They're going to... Also, see how um, you can work with sponsorship. You know how sponsorships are heavily involved in this program. Um, the support of clubs, big crowds, and just trying to put bowls out there in the mainstream media. Yeah, make sure you get involved. It is going to be fantastic. There's a website dedicated to the whole shebang, AustralianOpen.com.au. It's got all the franchises, everyone involved. Very shortly, it'll have the Fox Sports coverage as well of when you can actually watch it. Do not miss a moment. It is live action of bowls four nights in a row. It is an absolute, five nights in a row, it's an absolute ripper. So make sure that you stay tuned and stay to that website, AustralianOpen.com. .au. We are going to take a break. On the other side of this, we're going to talk about the teams. Case is going around again with his mob. They won it in year number one. Brett Wilkie's jump ship. We'll talk about the new franchise, the two new franchises, coming up next here on Without Bias. From the white outdoors to the great indoors, this is Without Bias. Lovely to have you with us across the country here on Without Bias. A very special edition. We've got a couple of very special guest co-hosts in the studio this morning. Brett Wilkie is here, Mark Casey is here as well. And of course, we can't forget the 2006 Commonwealth Games bronze medalist. He's got that underneath his business card. Barry Lester is here, oh. as always, on a Sunday morning. Uh, need to just fix a couple of things up as well before the break. It is early this morning, uh, and Aidan from Bowls Australia is here. Took a massive stick to me during the ad break. It is AustralianPremierLeague.com.au, not AustralianOpen.com.au. AustralianPremierLeague.com.au is where you can find all of the information. Now, Brett, need to talk to you first and foremost about the fact that you won't be representing Perth this year. You have aligned with your very home team in the Gold Coast Hawks, who are one of the two new franchises coming in. Tell us about the uh, the decision-making process, and of course, given that Gold Coast is so heavily aligned to Helensvale, it just seemed like a natural fit, really. Yeah, I was very fortunate enough last year to get the call up to, to play for Perth, and thank them very much for the opportunity, but... Uh, I've been at Club Helensvale now for 12 years and once they, they entered the competition through buying a franchise for the Gold Coast, uh, I, um, I had to make the decision to, to stick with my local team and, uh, and also thank the Perth Suns for the opportunity. But they were, they were understanding and uh, it gives them, as uh, Barry said earlier, Tom Mitchell's a, a Perth player, so it gives them an opportunity for another local player to join the team from WA. Tell us a bit about your teammates there, Wiz, and uh, a bit about the club and how they're getting involved to make sure that it's um, you know, a great success. Yeah, well, uh, Lindsay Clark, the Australian captain, uh, will be playing alongside with Nathan Rice, uh, who's also an another Australian player, and Anthony Fantini will be the coach of the side. So I know the club's very excited. They're, they've already jumped into a lot of marketing for the event. Great. Uh, they've, they've bought a number of corporate boxes for each night of the uh of the TV games and also we'll be taking a bus up from the Gold Coast to Brisbane every day so wow. there'll be great support from, from our club which hopefully will make a, a bit better atmosphere or a bit louder atmosphere yeah. I know it, it, it gained momentum every night last year so uh, with everyone knowing more about the competition it, I think it'll start big right from day one Makes sense for Lindsay to represent mm. the Gold Coast Hawks she was there every night last year every anyway so yeah. she may as well be there and be on the green this year so that's good it brings the female quota up a little bit as well which is fantastic what sort of local rivalry have we got going on here now between you two given that the brisbane and the gold coast connection they tend not to get along that well in sports normally what sort of a rivalry will we see from these two franchises yeah obviously uh it, it's really tough for me because because helen's valley is my club so um that decision to to play for brisbane again um was extremely tough but uh being uh you know the inaugural winners um you know i, I made the call that uh, I'll go around again with Brisbane yep. and, and see what happens after that. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a very interesting when we come up against the, the guys from, from my home club. And, Case, uh, it's pretty easy to get distracted in that atmosphere with the crowd and people cheering and yelling, waving their hands and so on. But you two uh, both being happily married men and, 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 oh. and families and kids, there's going to be a distraction this year that may uh, just put you off a little bit. What is it, mate? Tell us a bit about it. 
Yeah, well, I can actually uh, announce, <laughs> I don't even know if Wiz knows this, but um, the, the Gold Coast team are actually getting the Gold Coast meter made. Whoa, so. look out. Are they really? Yes. Now, see, I didn't know this. This is fantastic. Hey? Really? Oh, yeah, I heard Wiz picked a couple of them out <laughs> the other day. But, uh, oh, oh, wait, wait, we just got to check. Warwick Cap is not one of them, is he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that'll get the blood flowing. <laughs> <out> <laughs> <of the> ground. <laughs> wow, look out, boys. Goodness me, we talk about taking this to a whole other level. So, we, well, I like it. Oh, yeah, I can't say great. I'm against it, to be honest. Look how quickly Baz tries to get up to Pine Rivers now. He'll, uh, he'll be there for sure. Yeah, no, I'll be, uh, I don't know, valet parking. I'll do something, mate. I'll, I'll try and get a job up there somehow. No, well, I think there's a job up there for you somewhere. No, <laughs> maybe you can work the can bar. That was uh, one of the hits last year up in the stands was the can bar, which was fantastic. But that was some of the, the little things that as the tournament went on, that these things started to develop. I, I understand the can bar is back next year. We had some of the Barmy Army attend uh, the Thursday night, I think it was, uh, when England were getting belted around by the Aussies at the Gabba, the Barmy Army Took, pulled their tail from out between their legs and came down to watch the APL at night. The Harker we had one night as well. There's some little things like this that are really starting to take off, isn't there? Yeah, well, you got something like the bagpipes, which we're, we could try to introduce if we can, you know, for, for Alex. But, um, yeah, these are the kind of things we're trying to do around the event. And, and what was it like as players, guys, to have these mm. kind of things happening around the, the stadium? Oh, it created a great atmosphere, and I think it was b both the, the club and the APL have learned from last year. So it's just going to be bigger and better and, and exciting this year. Now, I've no doubt that you've all kept your eye on, obviously, Casey you would have kept your eye on what's going on with the Gold Coast Hawks, but everyone's kept their eye on what's happening with the Murray Steamers, mainly because they've included two of the world's best. Ha I guess, that is that a game changer right from the start? A, to have a new franchise in, but B, for them to bring in two of the best in Ryan Bester and, and Alex Marshall? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, and especially coming fresh from the Commonwealth Games where Alex, uh, you know, he, he dominated, um, you know, disciplines, you know, on his own back most of the time. So he's, uh, he's the world's best player, has been for a number of years now, um, and it's a credit for Bells Australia to, to get someone like that in uh, to play in our event. So he's going to be uh, the massive draw card and, and someone that, uh, you know, w we all look up to. So it's going to be great playing against him, but uh, hopefully he doesn't go that well. Now, well, that's, yeah, for you guys, fingers crossed. Cross. Now, all three of you have started from the bottom, obviously worked your way up to all be jackaroos and, and varying levels of success at various times. But I'm interested to know for someone like Tom Mitchell, uh, Robbie Wilde to some extent as well, a couple of the Adelaide Endurance boys, Scott Stolborn has gone from strength to strength since last year in the APL. What is the benefit for being on a national stage, a live TV matches where there's basically no room for error? What can that do for someone's career going forward? Oh, it's a great opportunity. It's their it's their time to shine. Really, it's uh, they've been given a break. Uh, sometimes you know you look back in your career and there's always somewhere where you got a lucky break or or an, a break that you don't. Um, now it's just a matter of taking taking that and making the most of it. So it's their opportunity and and hopefully it, you know it'd be great to see them go well. Case, you enjoyed it last year, but I don't think any man enjoyed the APL more than Robbie Wild last year. Yeah, being a local boy, it was uh, fantastic for Robbie. Um, you know, he's got a, he's got great experience already, uh, being a state player. But uh, you know, being live on TV is a, a total different ball game. And uh, Robbie was fantastic for us, and he will do again this year. And being a local boy is definitely a big advantage for us. Now, before we let you get out of here, and before we finish up this morning, a couple of ones, Brett, for you first. We haven't had a chance to talk to you since the Commonwealth Games, which. I'm sure it feels like a long time ago now, though, but just talk to us a little bit about the experience of being over in Glasgow. Oh, it was a great experience. Uh, I was lucky enough it was my second Games, and it was a great experience. The first Games in Delhi that I was involved in didn't have a lot of atmosphere with uh, hardly anyone in the crowd and that sort of thing, and security being a big issue, but mm. this was completely different with uh, a lot, felt a lot more safer, and also the some big crowds, especially when we played Scotland. Uh, massive crowd, plenty of noise, and it was just a great event to be a part of and well done to you another medal which is fantastic i'm sure that you'll just lock that one away nicely we're not telling people where it is we did that on the show once baz didn't we we told yeah. we spoke about where someone's medal was i hope that they didn't get robbed as a result of that yeah. well, we've got players uh hiding their medals and we've got you at the moment trying to look for your passport yeah uh, oh, well it's taken him the best part of 20 minutes to come away with that one it's just a couple of passport <laughs> issues but that, the flip side is i'm here to do this show with you instead That's so it, if mate. i can't be in bali i'd rather be here with you baz on a sunday morning case before you go as well I need to talk to you, I guess, about the disappointment of not being involved in the Com Games. You've been pretty open and pretty honest, and, and we've spoken to you on the show about it, but what's the message from Steve Glasson and the selectors going forward, and, and what's the mindset from your perspective to make the next Australian selection? 
Yeah, I've just got to work hard uh, on my game and, and improve in certain areas. And, um, you know, missing out was, as you say, was a disappointment. But there's so many uh, great events coming up, especially on, on our home greens on the Gold Coast and, and New Zealand. So quick greens. Um, so I'm definitely not out of the picture, but I, I realise I've got to work hard to, um, you know, yeah, as I said, improve a few things and, and hopefully uh, won't be too long before I'm back in the team. Well, boys, it's been fantastic to have you both here this morning. Really appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time. You are here for work purposes, but thank you for coming in. Case your uh, Western Bulldogs have just loaded up, so you will be very happy for the 2015 season, no doubt. But thanks for stopping by this morning and look forward to catching up with you both in Pine Rivers in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. A couple of weeks away, back. Yeah, it is uh, coming exciting. around very quickly. Before we finish up this morning as well, uh, just need to talk a little bit more about the Jack attack. For people who have heard what we've just been talking about, want to get involved, but aren't exactly sure how they can get involved, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so uh, in conjunction with the Australian Premier League, we'll be... Uh, We'll be launching the the Jack Attack program nationally. So at the moment we're we're still getting out to the clubs and informing about the program and, and how it's going to be available. So uh, once we've done that, we roll it out to the clubs. We, we you know we work with our zones and regions yep. and, and state territory associations. So and then we just go hell for leather and just get it out to clubs. So it's it's going to be modelled around the the same as the APL, the the, the uh, two sets of five ends and the one end to tie break. So. Short, sharp, fun. Uh, everyone can play it. All ages, abilities. So uh, it's a, a national participation strategy, and which rolls into club level. So then, if you're a club that hasn't got a strategy or a program, this is for you. Go to your local website, whether yep. it's Bowls Vic, Bowls New South yep. Wales, whatever your state or territory or association is, or for all the information, it's all there to see. Bowlsaustralia.com.au, Baz. It is That's all right. there, and, it's and contact your local regional bowls manager. That's the way to do it. And Barry Lester is one of those, and he joins us every Sunday morning on the show. Baz, enjoy the rest. Of your weekend. Yep, thanks very much, mate. Thanks everyone for your company. You've been listening to another edition of Without Bias.